okay good morning to the lecture technically this is the lecture number five right and we have been discussing from lecture three uh, about the uh, sub, uh, sub surface exploration the, or you can say the soil explorations <coughs> so few class last few classes we have discussed about the sub surface exploration reasons or necessity overviews and depths and boring depths this uh, discussion we did uh, maybe in lecture uh, two right uh, lecture two or lecture three maybe okay so this is to yes, sir. So today's lecture, lecture, three, lecture six right okay yes sir so, and last class we discussed about the methods uh, for making soil soil boring okay so in the beginning of the class i was discussing that last class is very important for you because uh, we discuss about the uh, boring methods then we discuss in details about the auger boring and when we do the auger boring and what are the conditions and limitations of auger borings and different types of okay so then we discuss about the auger boring and after that we discuss the one of the most popular boring in our country that is wash boring though the developers countries are uh, developed countries are not using this nowadays and we also discussed the rotary drilling and we also had some uh, video tutorial on this rotary drilling and how does this rotary drill work and also some informations about the bentonite okay then we discuss another uh, technique of the percussion boring okay and okay so now it's okay <clears throat> so in uh, we discuss the split spoon uh, sampling method so which is uh, collecting mainly the disturbed sample and we also try to calculate the area ratio to calculate the yes, how much, sir. Uh, disturb sample is it or the degree of disturbance of the sample and then finally we discuss about the SPD test and in SPD test we also have seen one video tutorial how does this test conduct okay so up to previous classes clear please uh, keep in mind if you do not have the clear concept of the previous class so today you will be in trouble little bit of trouble because uh, today this is just the expansion of the previous class so that's why please study the materials and for your better understanding also we just making backup recording so uh, whatever you like you just review it okay so there are some factors actually that uh, affect the SPT hammer so we know that uh, value of n in spt test we count from the number of blow right hammer blow and this is the one important parameter by using this parameter we can find so many correlations with the soil strength with the soil uh, relative density right soil consistency so by using this n value we'll try to find out the all the relevant yes, properties of soil okay that uh, we can draw or we can extract because this is the only value we are having from the site right in SPD test apart from the sample are you getting the concept so by using this by using this n value we'll try to develop everything so that is our intention so but this n value have some factors right so how does it uh, affecting or what are the factors uh, affecting this n value like first of all the hammers yes so, sir you know yes, sir. since the n yes, is mainly the hammer uh, blow so if the hammer efficiency is not accurate so that time we are having some error so that's why several factors are considered here so first one is the you can see spt hammer efficiency right yes sir can you see this and second one is the pore hole diameter third one is sampling method 
and last one but not least uh, uh, that is a rod length right what is the depth you are going with the hammer uh, in the during the testing so that would be the rod length so we'll discuss in details for every case but here you can see the hammer efficiency can be expressed like that so actual hammer energy to the sampler divided by the input energy okay and multiply with 100 that is you are getting in percentage okay so what does it mean how much energy actually you are getting to the sampler and how much energy you are giving to the energy so if you just make the ratio of it you are going to get the energy efficiency or that is the percentage of efficiency so in case of input energy we can calculate simply like we know the weight of the hammer right so in kilo newton it is like that okay and uh, height of the drop that is you consider in millimeter so finally we can say the input energy would be like that but for actual hammer energy we need different technique to calculate so that's why uh, it's a lengthy process so that's why uh, some of the research study we can follow okay so in yes, the sir. field the magnitude of er can be vary from 30 to 90 percent 30 to 90 percent so it's very interesting that you are hammering but you know the hammering efficiency is varying from 30 to 90 percent but you are you are considering okay i'm blowing uh one two three like this but due to some setup due to some other factors the energy of hammer is not uh efficiently acting on the anvil or efficiently acting on the sampler so that's why okay. you need some adjustment on this anvil okay. which value and value 100 so this is the raw is give, and value. Uh, on the hammer no 100 percent is not you can give this is 30 to 90 percent is the efficiency we are talking about efficiency so so if you consider input energy is the theoretical input energy right this one so you put this value and actually how much you are getting from the hammer that is actual energy so this is a matter of uh, like a vigorous method some special technique you need so that's why we need to follow some research study that by using uh, which study we can adjust the n value okay instead of doing this research work because in field we are not uh, getting this enough time or enough resources to do so so that's why we'll we'll take the expert solution okay so the expert people are saying that if you uh, blow one hammer maybe, maybe number of blow is eight right suppose or maybe ten okay okay i can consider number 10 so indirectly if you consider this percentage so it might give you three to nine right the efficiency can vary three to nine so this is very difficult to consider which percentage uh, which percentage of efficiency so that's why yes sir the us uh, standard okay so they practice and value to an average energy ratio is 60 percent right because if you sum this 30 plus 90 how much 120 right and divided by 2 it would be 60 so that's why in yes, uh, sir. US yes, Canada, sir. they follow the 60 percent so which uh, they consider n60 if you consider the hammer efficiency is 60 percent so that time we consider this is n60 so is that clear how n become n60 yes sir and why do you consider n yes sir into n60 to adjust the hammer efficiency because inside we cannot control suppose in in inside it is written that you have to be perpendicular right if the drop of the that. hammer should be perpendicular right but are you sure that your tripod stand is making the uh, rod is 100 percent perpendicular can you give the assurance do you do the leveling of this of this kind of things not right 
and this is the and this is the dynamic process and you know you tripod stand if one tripod stand is having in clay side another is in the hard soil side so clay side soil has a chance to uh, like go down right settle so so many factors are there yes, so that's why hammer efficiency varies 30 to 90 percent so usually people consider 60 percent of the efficiency like yes, sir. 60 yes, percent sir. efficiency yes, of the hammer so if you have like 10 number of blow you consider six you understand so now the standard n60 if you consider the correcting for the field procedure and standardize the field penetration number field penetration number is n right as a function of the input driving energy how much force we are giving and its dissipations around the samplers into the surrounding soil dissipations means what the wastage of energy suppose you are you are blowing one blow of hammer but it is not 100 percent okay it might be wasting some energy during the blow right maybe due to the, some friction due to the some other factors of the member so what are the factors they consider they they consider the hammer efficiency yes, yes sir they consider the borehole yes, diameter factor they consider the sampler correction factor they consider the rod length so these are the few factors they consider to adjust the n60 yes, because in practical case you can directly consider as i said like okay if n is 100 if you consider the hammer efficiency is on uh, 60 percent it can be six right but if you consider directly like this so it's also it might have some error but to get more adjustment with the side issues based on your testing setup and based on based on your test uh, specifications you can adjust n60 more precisely but these are approximate values okay so now you know the n value from the test yes, sir. what is the n value yes sir. that is the number of penetration you counted in the site right you have seen the testing method last class so you count the anvil of last two penetration of 100 mm right you remember or not okay yes, sir. So okay so if you have these values you can simply put these values here and you can calculate the n60 now question is that how can you get this eta h that is the hammer efficiency uh, eta b that is the borehole diameter and eta s that is the sampler corrections and eta r that is the correction for the rod length where are you going to get this so don't worry the researchers are here for you so they develop uh, some charts for you right so these are the two research group seed and scampton these two researcher group develop the uh, factors okay, values for you for different types of diameters different types of hammer different types of borehole uh, 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 sorry soil samplers and the rod length okay so in next slide we can see this also so just keep yes, in sir. mind this formula right yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. so now here we can see in the first case we need to consider the n or eta h right so that is one that is a variation of eta h can you see the slide is it visible from your uh, device yes, sir. okay so i will look uh, there are different country standard right so mostly we are using the united states standard so nowadays also you can use the indian standard some of the people are yes, using sir. in bangladesh mostly <clears throat> so in different country use the different types of hammer okay so yes, sir, we can... this donut type hammer yes, is very popular yes sir so you might be confused now what is donut type hammer and what is uh, safety hammer right okay so let me show you the picture can you see this picture that is called donut type hammer <clears throat> can you see this one so yes, you just making a free fall right of this hammer okay yes, into yes, the sir. anvil 
so that kind of uh, situation we call the donut hammer <coughs> and safety hammer whenever you have some safety issues can you see you have extra sleep you have extra sleep right okay and this is another one though the type of this is not mentioned there that is uh, automatic hammer okay where you need like very uh, high number of uh, repetitions so that time you just use this automatic mechanical devices it will like automatically will do the hammering hammering okay so now you if you come back here so you can see the safety hammer and the donut hammers one is the hammer type and in case of eta h also depends on the hammer release how are you releasing the hammer right so you are using the similar distance right 760 mm approximately is how are you considering that the hammer will fall so if you consider the free fall if they consider the and uh, eta h was one percent yes sir one certain percent is if you are uh, considering rope and pulley yes so sir. that time they are considering yes. different so if i consider this one actually this is very common in our country right yes sir yep we usually see that we we usually see the donut type of hammer in our country right and rope and pulley activities have yes, yes, around 45 yes, percent you see how the efficiency is going down now <clears throat> okay so is that clear how can we select the eta h okay so we can we can select the diameter range if your diameter of the borehole is 60 to 100 mm sorry 120 mm so that time you consider uh, uh, eta b that is the diameter variation is one so that means up to 120 mm we don't have to consider any factor you just simply multiply with one the value will be remain same right but if the diameter is in the range of 150 so you consider 1.05 if two, yes, sir. you yes, consider 1.15 yes sir okay so what does it mean if you have higher diameter it has a chance to increase your hammer efficiency yes, Yes, because these yes, values are increasing can you look into this these values are in increasing mode and these values you might find it in numerical value but these are actually in percentile can you see okay now come to the uh, variation of uh, uh, eta uh, s that is the yes. sampler right so if you use the standard sampler so you like use this value is one standard yes, sampler means what you have seen no, last sorry. class that we Repeat. consider the standard dimension of the split spoon sampler right but we can also adjust the dimension of the sampler you understand or not yes, okay so it, okay so in last class we have seen the sampler split spoon sampler has a standard dimension so if you do not uh, follow this standard dimension you need to adjust with this okay okay <clears throat> so okay if you are having some cases like uh, with linear for dense and sand and clay type soil so that time okay, you sir. can go for uh, reduction of 0.8 so that means 20 percent you're reducing with linear for loose sand soil right so for that you just multiply 0.9 so it is 10 percent reduction factor yes. okay and in case of eta r that is the rod length if it is more than 10 meter sorry it is more than 10 meter so that time you don't have to adjust the eta r but if it is 6 to 10 meter range you need to adjust yes, sir. why you need to adjust because whenever your rod is less in length right 
so yes. you have a higher yes, chance sir. to uh, like a higher chance to reduce the efficiency are you getting the point so you might have like shorter so lens most of the so value you might have uh, a higher from, chance to uh, reduce the efficiency of the hammer okay so yes, if you apply Still these uh, four factors on okay, this uh, formula so you can easily calculate the n60 so now this very important point that is we can correlate this n60 value with the soil properties so that is really uh, important for us that what uh, why are we doing this test to know these values actually yes, sir. our intention is to get the soil properties right to know the soil properties so if you can see these correlations by these correlations we can find out the many of the properties of soil by using this n60 values okay so in the very beginning if we look into the formula of consistency index right so we can see this consistency index can be calculated like this where uh, we consider the liquid limit uh, difference of liquid limit with uh, natural moisture content right and divided by the difference of liquid limit with the uh, plastic limit okay so these way we can find out the consistency index so this formula they try to correlate with the n60 value the researchers and they develop one correlation chart for you okay so here you can see from this uh, consistency index and n60 value you can also get some idea about approximate strength right approximate compression strength of the soil which is also important for us actually we are trying to find out the bearing capacity of soil right so you miss the beginning part yes sir do you miss the do you miss the beginning part of the lecture no, sir. yes so we already consider why we are considering n60 okay, sir. I, I missed because the there are so many factors you come to the here so the hammer varies 30 to 90 percent right but the us standard or the specialist they prefer okay since there is a high fluctuation of variations okay, okay so you consider n60 yes now okay. yes so n60 n60 also can be adjust for more accuracy by this way okay so now we are considering n60 is more accurate than n only is that clear to you okay so and this ci and n60 based on these two values we can also predict the q u that is the compressive strength of soil okay so that is one of the ultimate goal of ours to find out the strength capacity of soil so these are uh, approximations uh, correlations between uh, ci and 60 and q u right so you can see they discuss some range ranges like standard penetration number if it is less than two or up to two so we consider the soil consistency is very soft we consider the soil consistency is very soft right and that time we find the consistency index is 0.5 and the strength of the soil or the compression strength of this particular soil that yes, is an unfined condition it would be kilonewton uh, 25 kilonewton per meter square less than 25 similarly you can look into 228 uh, right can you see the things okay so for uh, if you find that n60 is 228 you can say the consistency soft to medium and these ways the strength is going uh, higher so there are some range they specify so now if i give you some n value okay if i give you the n value from the field test and if i say okay can you tell me the value of ci and qu can you find it yes, sir. 
right so you better practice so here you can see once we can uh, get the n60 we can find out these values right yes, so sir. now what more we can find as yes. more property as we can find from this n60 or n value that would be good for us because finding the value of n is easy right okay so now like some of the researchers this uh, her, uh, his team they did one uh, correlations between the shear strength of clay okay for the clay type sand and n60 yes sir okay so one important uh, things i just missed that is it is this correlation is specially for cohesive soil cohesive soil keep in mind right so cohesive soil is like clay clay types which 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 usually like a clay type so this is the another correlation that from where we can find out the shear strength of clay right that means the cohesive type soil so that is very important property for us so we can see the ratio between cohesive soil and the atmospheric pressure is having the correlations or the formula with n60 so have a look if you want to calculate this uh, cu we sir. can find out the uh, value of CU easily if you know the yes, sir. of N60. Yes, sir. Because BA is the atmospheric pressure. So if it is in kilonewton meter, it is 100. If it is in pound, uh, actually this is pound per inch square, right? That would be 2000, right? Is it clear? So you just, sim you just simply put the value of PA so you can get the value of CU because you know the N60, you know the PA. So any confusion? So have a look another property added here that is Cu. So now we can find out the three properties from this soil uh, test. Sorry, from this uh, N60. Yes. Right? Okay. Sir. Cohesive soil is the clay type soil. So there are several types of soil, right? So these are the relations they develop with the cohesive soil testing so we'll, we'll go okay, also co cohesionless soil also like the granular soil so these are the formulas and relationship they studied in their research with the cohesive soil you understand so these are the values developed for the cohesive type soil so you already see i discussed this one right and parallelly we can also do the relationship with the consolidations ratio that is OCR over consolidations ratio okay so over consolidations ratio of the soil also we can find from this uh, relationship so this one is uh, done by this research group in 1988 so one value yes, here sir. that is the effective vertically stress in kilo uh, mega uh, mega pascal actually right so if you just have the effective vertical load that is coming to the soil so you can find out the over consolidations ratio maybe you did over consolidation uh, ratio test in the lab right so you see you did this test in the laboratories but if you know the n60 values from the spd test and you know the vertical stress of the soil so you can directly find this over consolidation yes. ratio that is approximate though right so CU, C OCR and N60 is, is only approximate. We know because N, N, C, N is coming from N60 is coming from the N value, right? And so many factors we are considering to calculate the N60. So this is also approximate. And by using this, whatever the parameters we are getting, these are all are approximate. So that's why in soil engineering or the foundation design, you'll find there are uh, designing factors are higher than the other design factors because nothing is accurate here we all consider it from the approximations so now come to the granular soil type so we discussed about the cohesive soil last class uh, sorry last few uh, slides so now we can discuss about the granular so in case of granular soil overburden pressure is the effect so uh, do you have any idea who is overburden pressure yes no please response no su suppose this is a uh, sand uh, this is a soil area okay this is a soil layer so if you have some load 
in the top of this soil so due to this load what is the pressure is coming to the soil okay so that is called the overburden pressure right but for clay type soil or the cohesive type soil we do not consider the overburden but for granular so granular soil if i give you the example these are kind of sand soil sandy soil you understand so for sandy soil it is having some overburden stress and this overburden pressure affect the value of n but for clay type soil it does not affect do you get the difference now? Okay, sir. No. For clay type soil. For clay type soil. Okay, sir. If you even have some okay, load on the soil, no, no. it produces the overburden pressure. So they do not affect the value of N in the clay type soil. Right? But when it is the granular soil or sandy soil, so okay. this overburden pressure affects the value of N. Okay. Yes. So the value, so so the value of N obtained from the field exploration under different effective overburden, effective that means active overburden pressure, right? Should be changed to the corresponding to standard value. Okay. Standard value of N, you can say. So have a look. Before we consider N to N60, right? We consider N to N60. Now, while you are coming to the uh, granular type soil and you are having some overburden effect, so that time you need to consider N2, N60 to N160. You understand? So, finally, the value of N we get in three parameters, uh, three forms or in three types. One is simply N, that is the field one, and is a 60% efficiency, another one is the N160. So that is especially for what type of soil? Granular soil. Okay. So just, just keep in mind. So N60 we can find. Sorry, N160 we can find. C suffix of N and N60. So N60 we know already, right? And what is CN? That is the correlation factor. So to calculate the CN, there are so many research development so that would be your homeworks reading homeworks that's to look into this uh, factor cn like how to calculate the cn so there are uh, several researchers like so have a look there are uh, several researchers did some empirical formula to calculate the value of cn right if you have the uh, lecture uh, chapter lectures or the chapter book with you you can see there are several formulas is written okay so you just look into the several formulas maybe i may mention in the exam okay by using this campton's relationship try to find out the uh, n160 right or may i may mention okay uh, by using the peak yes, sir. and yes, sir. Group research try to find yes, out the n60 and then calculate the N160. Right? So I can ask uh, by mentioning the any researcher name. Is it clear? I can I can say that okay by using the uh, relationship of skits and his group, first calculate the CN that okay, is the full okay, factor okay. and then calculate the uh, N160. So you can do it. So you can look into the reference book. So you'll find it. And if you have any confusion about these formulas, so we can discuss in the next class also. Okay. So these are just formula. You just need to uh, input the some parameters and then you'll get the CN. And if you get the CN, then you can easily find out the N160. Okay. So I think time's up. So for today up to this and maybe end of this chapter, we are going to take a class test. So please try to review the lectures before okay, we sir. Uh, discuss the okay, class two classes. Sir. Okay. And today's class and, and another class might be needed to complete this chapter. One hour class might be needed to complete this, not chapter, complete this uh, session. Okay.
Okay. So thank you guys.